Hello children. So today in this module we are going to read the chapter The Portrait of a Lady book Hornbill written by Khushwan Singh. Now children Khushwan Singh he is quite a celebrated author of India and he is widely read on international level. Now this chapter the portrait of a lady is basically tracing the phases of a grandson's relationship with his grandmother while growing up. Here the narrator explores the theme of innocence, friendship, love, kindness, selflessness, respect and acceptance. It is a piece of memory actually that the grandson recalls after his grandmother's death. The story is narrated in the first person, drawing the portrait of an old lady in the mind of the readers. The description is so vivid that when you read the story, there is an image of grandmother created in our mind. Now, let us start with the paragraphs and the explanations. Now, the first paragraph, it says, My grandmother, like everybody's grandmother, was an old woman. She had been old and wrinkled for the 20 years that I had known her. People said, that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a husband. But that was hard to believe. My grandmother's portrait hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room. He wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes. His long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least a hundred years old. He did not look the sort of person who would have a wife or children. He looked as if he could only have lots and lots of grandchildren. Let us check the glossary children here. I found just one word difficult here, mantelpiece. The meaning of the word is a structure of wood, marble or stone above and around a fireplace. Now let us come to the explanation part. See children, the background of or the setting of the story is Indian. And like we earlier discussed that the story is tracing the relationship between grandson and his grandmother. So you can relate with this story and uh, due to the setting being Indian, it is not that difficult for you to understand it. Okay. So now here, if you read the first paragraph, you find out that the narrator is telling us how his grandmother was and he says that uh, he had known her for past 20 years. And since the beginning, she had always been old and wrinkled. When he says that for past 20 years, means since he was born, since he recognized her, okay, since he was able to recognize her, he had seen her in the same condition, in the same appearance, old and wrinkled. And that is why what happened? It was difficult for the narrator to believe that she was once young and pretty, though many people told him that the grandmother was once young and pretty. Now then it says that, you know, his grandfather, okay, people also told him that his grandmother had a husband, okay, but it was difficult for the grandson to believe it, okay, though he had seen his grandfather's portrait there hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room and when he looks at the portrait, he again feels that grandmother, grandfather was looking equally old and he looked so old that it seems that he had always been, you know, the same and he can't imagine his grandfather also uh, ever young or ever, ever he can't imagine he had ever had any wife or he could have children. He feels that in the portrait he looked so old as if he was 100 years old, okay. And he feels that such a person, uh, a person of that age could never have a wife or children, they could only have lots and lots of grandchildren. So here you can see this basically reflects the innocence of this grandson. Now children, next let us come to the next paragraph. The next paragraph says, as for my grandmother being young and pretty, the thought was almost revolting. She often told us of the game she used to play as a child that seemed quite absurd and undignified on her part. And we treated it like the fables of the prophets she used to tell us. Let us check the glossary. So children, you can see here that the words which I feel are difficult for you to understand, I have, uh, th those are written in yellow, okay, and the meaning of those words are given here. 
revolting the meaning of revolting is extremely unpleasant or disgusting absurd is illogical undignified meaning disrespectful fables fictitious stories with a moral teaching prophets saints now come to the explanation part so here the narrator tells us that my grandmother being young and pretty the thought was almost revolting okay so he feels that he can't imagine his grandmother ever been young and pretty that was quite an unpleasant thought or imagination which he never liked to he never liked that idea okay and though he says that his grandmother always shared with him that how she used to play like you know those games with children play when they are they are young okay but he also feels that at this age because he had never seen his grandmother you know except old and wrinkled or bent okay he had never seen her otherwise so it was uh, difficult for him to imagine her doing anything else except she, what she was uh, doing since he had known her okay so that is why he says that he found it quite undignified and absurd or illogical imagining his grandmother playing those game what children play when they are young okay and so what he did he treated these stories of his grandmother or those experiences or those memories that his grandmother shared with him he treated it like the fables or like the stories told by the prophets or by the saints which people just believe for the sake of believing but they actually don't believe that now the next paragraph children says she had always been short and fat and slightly bent her face was a criss cross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere no we were certain she had always been as he had known her old so terribly old that she could not have grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years she could never have been pretty but she was always beautiful she hobbled about the house in spotless white with one hand resting on her waist to balance her stoop and the other telling the beads of her rosary her silver locks were scattered untidily over her pale puckered face and her lips constantly moved in inaudible prayer yes she was beautiful she was like the winter landscape in the mountains an expanse of pure white serenity breathing peace and contentment let's take glossary here children criss cross it is basically referring to wrinkles a pattern of intersecting straight lines hobbled walked in an awkward way awkward way why you know you know old people they are not able to walk properly they limp at times or you know they have problem or they have difficulty in walking so she used to uh, you know hobble stoop bent the grandmother was bent her posture was bent locks hair rosary a string of beads for chanting prayer untidily not neat serenity peaceful and calm puckered a face contract into wrinkles inaudible not audible or unable to be heard contentment a state of satisfaction let's check explanation here children now the author says uh, he is basically giving the physical description of his grandmother which is so vivid and clear that it draws an image of the old lady in everybody's mind when you read this paragraph you could you must have created an image of uh, the grandmother you know gra uh, the natus grandmother in your mind so now he explains how his grandmother was short fat slightly bent in posture due to age and her face was also covered with wrinkles okay and uh, when he says that uh, criss cross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere so he he actually wants to emphasize in this point that she looked so old that even aging was no more visible on her face okay and she had been the same and now he was sure that she because she he had since the beginning he had seen her in the same way so he was now certain that grandmother was she was never young and pretty and she had been the same as old as she was then and according to the narrator she was beautiful but not pretty so children you can understand here the two words beautiful and pretty it has been used uh, for age pretty is normally we use pretty word for girls okay and beautiful is used for uh, women okay so here these two words are referring to age basically so 
it, uh, grandson is ready to accept that the grandmother was beautiful but pretty he doesn't feel that she was ever pretty because he can't imagine her ever being young she walked around the house in an awkward way wearing spotless white sari with beads of rosary holding in one hand and the other hand rested on her back supporting her bent her white locks of hair was uh, were spread on her face she was constantly chanting prayers here what happens the narrator he compares his grandmother to winter landscape in the mountains which has a peaceful and calm feel and he says that she was a living example of purity serenity peace and contentment because he could see all that on the face of that old lady or on the face of his grandmother the next paragraph children says my grandmother and i were good friends my parents left me with her when they went to live in the city and we were constantly together she used to wake me up in the morning and get me ready for school she said her morning prayer in a monotonous sing song while she bathed and dressed me in the hope that i would listen and get to know it by heart i listened because i loved her voice but never bothered to learn it then she would fetch my wooden slate which she had already washed and plastered with yellow chalk a tiny earthen ink pot and a red pen tie them all in a bundle and hand it to me after a breakfast of thick stale chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it we went to school she carried several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs see it's such a beautiful description okay how what a beautiful relationship they share that has been discussed here now th- let's take the meaning children monotonous dull and boring fetch go for and then bring back something for someone plastered covered with a layer of plaster earthen made of clay stale something which is not fresh explanation children the author in this paragraph he gives an account of it is basically a beautiful account of his life or his relationship uh, with his grandmother when he was there in the village he also gives us the reason that why he was left there in the village with his grandmother and where exactly his parents were so his parents they went to the city and until they settled down uh, till then the narrator or the grandson was left here with his grandmother living with her in the village so they both were each other's companion there in the village so now they they were sharing a very beautiful bond there the author's grandmother she every morning used to wake him up and get him ready for school she would recite her morning prayers while she bathed and dressed him up and she used to recite it because she wanted uh, the narrator to learn it the grandson to learn it but grandson he listened to his uh, grandmother not because he wanted to learn it but he actually loved her voice okay so what happens she would make his things ready grandmother would prepare everything get everything ready for the grandson whether it was his wooden slate tiny earthen ink pot a red pen and then she would feed him uh, or, i mean she would give him stale chapatis uh, butter and sugar spread on it to eat in breakfast and after the, that uh, she used to accompany him to school and she also used to carry some stale chapatis with her to feed the village dogs in the next paragraph the narrator says my grandmother always went to school with me because the school was attached to the temple the priest taught us the alphabet and morning prayer while the children sat in rows on either side of the veranda singing the alphabet or the prayer in a chorus my grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures when we had both finished we would walk, walk back together this time the village dogs would meet us at the temple door they followed us to our home growling and fighting with each other for the chapatis we threw to them when my parents were comfortably settled in the city they sent for us that was a turning point in our friendship although we shared the same room my grandmother no longer came to school with me i used to go to an english school in a motor bus there were no dogs in the streets and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of her city house now glossary children scriptures the sacred writings of a religion or sacred books of a particular religion 
growling making a low guttural sound in the throat which those you know dogs used to make when they used to fight now explanation the narrator tells us how his grandmother would accompany him to the school as the temple was attached to the school and she used to visit the temple daily so narrator tells us that how when on one side he would sit with other children on the veranda and would learn the alphabet and prayers in the chorus and the teacher was this the this temple priest who used to teach them the grandmother by the time used to sit inside the temple and she would read the scripture or scriptures or she would offer her prayers there thus grandmother every day used to accompany the grandson to the school because the school was attached to the temple after finishing they both would walk back together to their home and now on the way to their home grandmother would feed stray dogs with those stale chapatis that she used to carry with her every morning okay and these stray dogs growling and fighting with each other for those chapatis they would follow them to their home now eventually when the parents of the grandson they got settled in the city they called the grandmother and the grand uh, and the grandson or the narrator both there in the city now children what happens there comes a turning point in their relationship in the relationship of narrator and grandmother when they shifted to city okay so what was the turning point because they in the village they were sharing a very strong and a very beautiful bond they were each other's companion there okay but now when they moved to city how their life changed let's see that though they shared the same room but she no longer would accompany him to school as the grandson started going to an english medium school and the motor bus would come to pick and drop him there were there were no dogs in the streets whom the grandmother could feed so she started feeding sparrows in the veranda of their house now children these changes do not stop here only rather there are more changes that take place with the passage of time we'll read that in the next paragraph so let's move to the next paragraph the next paragraph says as the years rolled by we saw less of each other so sometimes she continued to wake me up and get me ready for school when i came back she would ask me what the teacher had taught me i would tell her english words and little things of western science and learning the law of gravity archimedes principle the world being round etc this made her unhappy she would not help me with my lessons she did not believe in the things they taught at the english school and was distressed that there was no teaching about god and the scriptures one day i announced that we were being given music lessons she was very disturbed to her music had lewd associations it was the monopoly of harlots and beggars and not meant for gentle folk she said nothing but her silence meant disapproval she rarely talked to me after that you can see here children what changes took place in the relationship or in that beautiful bond of a grandson and grandmother once they moved to the city first we will check the glossary and then we will come to the explanation part lewd means indecent or obscene monopoly something that is controlled by one person or a group and not shared by others harlots prostitutes gentle folk people belonging to gentle families or noble birth explanation now the narrator he tells us that with with the passage of time the years passed by his interaction with his grandmother it reduced for some time though in the beginning for some time grandmother continued to wake him up and she would also get him ready for school okay and when grandson would come back from the school obviously she was not able to accompany him to school because he was taking the school bus okay so when grandson would come back from the school she would ask him what he learnt there in the school that day and the grandson would tell him tell her the english words or the scientific terms or archimedes principle or you know word being round being round which she did not know about okay so what happened now she could not help her help her grandson with his lessons fine and besides she was also unhappy with the school as in his new school she found that the school never taught about god and religious scriptures 
and this made her sad she did not approve of you know such an education because for uh, as per her according to her uh, education of god or uh, scriptures it was more important when there there was you know a sudden change in grandmother or grandmother even stopped talking to to the grandson one day when she got to know that grandson had uh, he was getting music lessons in the school and she became very disturbed then according to gr- grandmother music was indecent and it was not meant for the people who belong to gentle families rather it is it was meant for the beggars and prostitutes so she did not like that he learned that the grandson learned music so she finally stopped talking to grandson because she knew that she was hurt every time or she was you know sad every time she would ask the grandson what was taught there in the school the next paragraph says when i went up to university i was given a room of my own the common link of friendship was snapped my grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation she rarely left her spinning wheel to talk to anyone from sunrise to sunset she sat by her wheel spinning and reciting prayers only in the afternoon she relaxed for a while to feed the sparrows while she sat in the veranda breaking the bread into little bits hundreds of little birds collected round her creating a veritable bedlam of chirping some came and perched on her legs others on her shoulders some even sat on her head she smiled but never shooed them away it used to be the happiest half hour of the day for her let's check glossary children snapped break suddenly and completely seclusion the state of being private and away from the people resignation the acceptance of something undesirable but inevitable spinning wheel a household machine with a wheel attached to it for spinning yarn veritable interesting or unusual bedlam confusion perched alight or rest on something should make a person or animal go away explanation now children there comes a phase in the relationship of grandson and grandmother when grandson he started going to university and he was given a separate room now what was the common link between them that room only now once the grandson was given a separate room that common link between them also was taken away so what happened that now their relationship was sort of broken okay the grandmother accepted her loneliness she ac- accepted her seclusion because that is what happens you know when parents they grow old children become adult they are mature you know they move away they have their own world they want to you know live in their own live their in their own world and there is less interaction between you know uh, the old people and the young gener- younger generation so that is what happened here and this is something inevitable generation gap is inevitable it is unavoidable nobody can avoid this it is better to accept it instead of fighting okay so what happened grandmother was you know quite understanding so what she did she accepted her seclusion because she knew that children they move away when they grow up and now what happened she became more private and started spending her whole day spinning wheel from sunrise to sunset she would not talk to anybody she would sit silently reciting her prayers and spinning her wheel in the afternoon she would feed sparrows in the veranda breaking the bread into small pieces she would feed hundreds of birds those sparrows would gather around her some would sit near her some on her legs some on her shoulders and few even on her head she never shooed them away but always smiled because that was her happiest hour of the day thus grandmother engaged herself in different ways so children the explanation part is over i'm stopping it here the next or uh, the part which is left will be discussing that in the next module which will be uh, which i'll be uploading later let's have a small recap of what you have read today okay 
So here it says the narrator gives us a detailed account of his grandmother with whom he had a long association. He describes his grandmother as short, fat and slightly bent. Her silver hair was scattered untidily on her wrinkled face. She hobbled around the house in white clothes, with one hand her waist supporting the bent and the other telling the beads of her rosary. The narrator recollects her as not very pretty but always beautiful. He compares her serene face to that of a winter landscape. During their long stay in the village, grandmother would wake him up in the morning, plastered his wooden slate, prepared his breakfast and escorted him to school. While he studied alphabet, she read the scriptures in the temple attached to the school. On their way back home, she fed stale chapatis to stray dogs. The turning point in their relationship came when they went to live in the city. Now, the author went to a city school in a motor bus and studied English, law of gravity, Archimedes principle and many more things which she could not understand at all. Grandmother could no longer accompany him to school nor help, his, help the grandson in his studies. She was upset that there was no teaching of God and, God and scriptures at city school. Instead, he was given music, music lesson, which according to her was not meant for gentle folk, but for harlots and beggars, though the grandmother did not approve it, but kept quiet. When Kushwan Singh, he went to university, he was given a separate room. The common link of their friendship was snapped. Grandmother rarely talked to anyone now. She spent most of her time sitting beside her spinning wheel, reciting prayers and feeding the sparrows in the afternoon. Now children, here is this vocabulary practice for you. As I was giving you the meaning of the difficult words along with the paragraphs. Okay. So here you can see this and you practice it. Okay. The words are given on the left hand side and the options are given on the right hand side. You have to choose the correct, correct option. Now comes uh, the assignment part children, the questions given here, you have to write these questions in your notebook and uh, write the answers on the basis of the part that you have read today. In case of any queries, please send me your queries, I will be addressing that in the next uh, uh, module. Thank you, stay safe, stay sanitized and stay indoors.